वाहेगुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह सो आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो अबाउट भाई गुरबख्श सिंह जी वन ऑफ द रीजंस आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो इज आई रियली डू अंडरस्टैंड वेयर ही इज कमिंग फ्रॉम ही इज सेइंग देयर आस्किंग फॉर दीस प्रिजनर्स हु आर ऑलरेडी इन जेल हु सर्वड आउट देयर सेंटेंसेस नो नो कमेंट्री ऑन वेदर राइट और रॉन्ग व्हाटएवर but these guys have been sentenced and they've served out their sentence and they should be free as per any law anywhere in the world somebody who served out their sentence should be allowed to leave the prison and yet here they are in prison indefinitely and they're not coming out indian government with impunity is keeping them in and pai sahab respect to him you know he doesn't have an army behind him he doesn't have anything that he can do but what he's done he's put his life on the line and this is a very long in the tradition by the way for those people that criticize fasting etc mohan das karam chand gandhi he was known for fasting yeah same with many other people das singh bheruman this is a way for somebody who doesn't have um all the resources that a state might have to kind of you know compel some action and he's trying to get the seat prisons freed and you know kudos to him I respect him for that you know he's put his life on the line and actually what really infuriated me was the indian government coming in and taking this man kidnapping him effectively at midnight charging him with attempted suicide rather than actually respecting him yeah for the fact that he was trying to get them to comply with their own laws right and look what's happened recently anna hazare yeah baba ramdev all these people they fasted and have they been arrested no so this is a gross kind of inequality and actually to me what this brings to mind is something that effectively we already kind of know but every incident kind of pushes it further is the complete slavery of the sikhs in india think about this we can't protest for those people that have been killed and now we can't protest for those people that are alive we if we if we don't even forget protesting and out there marching and trying to fight them but if we try to starve ourselves to death even then they won't allow it you can't win either way and they won't release those prisoners as well so it really infuriates me the fact that this is going on in india and really i can understand why by good boxing so i can understand why currently there's five people outside the indian high commission fasting same idea this is not right personally and this is just purely my own opinion i wouldn't put my life in the hands of the indian government because indian government does not care about sikhs it's been shown again and again and again right that they don't care so therefore i personally wouldn't put my life in their hands but i can understand where pai guru boxing is coming from and i can understand where these bond things are coming from they're trying to do what they can right to force action and put by the indian government the thing with the hunger strike though is that it works if there's two things that are met one is that it's well publicized gandhi for example everybody was talking about it's like a countdown media circus everybody flocking around him right that's the first thing that you need a media interest all over just make it a big news The second thing you need is the people to care about you. You need people to feel or oh, for example with Mahatma Gandhi, right? With Mohandas Gandhi, they cared about him, right? They wanted him to basically not die. That was an essential part of him going, you know, for a hunger strike is that people actually cared about him. The problem we've got is that number one in India, the Indian media hasn't shown anything. It's been a Sikh media who's been going on and on about what's going on in Punjab, but the Indian media almost ignored it. The problem with what's happening now is is that the Indian media don't care and the West media don't care. What's happening right now? Five things overnight outside the Indian High Commission and not one mention in the news. I checked this morning not one mention only in the Sikh news. So the Sikh news is obviously very concerned about this. We've got our guys covering it and yet in the mainstream news nothing. Secondly, the people don't care. Indians do not care. Yeah? They see uh, the five Sikhs in jail as extremists so when we start protesting for them to come out they think well they should be kept in more importantly not only do they think that but also they don't care really about one Sikh starving himself to death so we've got a bit of a, a media battle to win here and a bit of a uh, you know public relations battle to win here and that brings me back to why what we should do now and this is purely from my own thoughts because I'm no kind of political expert but just judging this as a sick as a concerned sick and as somebody who actually cares about the people that are in prison yeah and cares about by guru boxing i can just offer my two cents number 1 on the media side i think we've got to invest our resources i.e. money into getting media savvy for example in the uk yeah we haven't got one full time sikh media face correspondent yeah somebody who is talking 
to the British media who's got links, who's in with these guys, taking them out. A guy with a budget, somebody who can actually use that for lobbying. We haven't got a lobbying group and we haven't got media budget. So all these people turning up to places, showing up concerned people, people that got a lot, lot of love and stuff, they need to be led, right? And really, we need somebody who's fluent in English, who speaks the language of the media, who's able to write press releases, get them onto Reuters, get them into Newswire, and really get this to work. So we, we need to have that. And the same in India. I don't know how many press, how many Sikh um, you know, correspondents that we have, how many people that we have from the Sikh community who are our spokespeople. Yeah? Not somebody who's trying to get political power, but just somebody who can relay the message clearly, concisely to all the newspapers about why we should care. So we need to invest in our media. Yeah? And, and not our media as in Sikh media, but our relationship with the wider media. The second thing is, right, is that I think we need to start doing events that are not in Punjab. Yeah? For example, the Punjab police, right, is used to killing Sikhs. Yeah? We know that. They've killed so many of them in the last 20 years, 30 years. Also, they don't care about Sikhs. They've shown that from by Jaspal Singh being killed for just sitting there saying Waheguru. So we don't need to start doing events in Punjab. We need to go and do events other parts of India, places that are more public. Yeah? Places like Mad uh, Bombay, Madras, Delhi. Yeah? Delhi may be not the best place again. However, the point is we need to get around police people who are not used to killing Sikhs, who may even have a little bit of respect and some more respect for the rule of law. The Punjab police don't have that. Events that are very public, like for example what happened in Delhi, yeah? when you saw the Singhs out there, they were you know, stopping the trains and um, marching down the roads, that was on the news. People were hearing about that. yeah. But unfortunately, Bhai Gurbakh Singh isn't. So we need to think about events that are actually more powerful. Bhai Gurbakh Singh is one person. Yeah? He decided by himself to do something for the Panth. However, if we had a Panth that was actually getting together and thinking about events that are long term, how we're going to do this, yeah? then actually we might achieve something in a place like Bombay or in a place like Delhi or somewhere which is public. Events that are designed to basically gather public attention. Now the other thing is, is actually when it comes to our relationship with the Indian public, we're going to have to make a choice. Yeah? And this is just my opinion, like it or not, I've said it many times in my videos, I don't think that we should be aiming for a small Khalistan, we should be aiming for the whole of India, Khal Saraj over India. So that means our rhetoric needs to change. Yeah? And basically we need to make a choice. On the one hand, I do respect Bhai Balwan Singh Rajwana. Yeah? He is somebody who says, you know what, I don't care about the Indian government, I don't care about the Indian people, I know where I am and I'm not going to listen to anybody else and Khalistan Zindabad. That's what he says, right? Jardikala, at least he's taken the policy that he's not going to work with these people. On the other hand, what you've got is a bunch of people, majority of the public, who both seem to keep shouting out Khalistan Zindabad, Khalistan Zindabad, and yet at the same time are actually appealing to the Indian people and the Indian government to help them yeah, on things like the rule of law here. The thing we need to understand is that the Indian people right, are brought up to believe in the concept of Mother India. Yeah? They love India, all of it. They don't want to break it up. Yeah? And every time we say Khalistan Zindabad, the average Indian says, no, 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 can't have that. These guys are nuts. Let's crush them. Doesn't matter what the government do, let them break all the laws, let them break their own laws, but just stop these people trying to break up Mother India. They are Desh Bhagats, yeah? this is what it's called, Desh Bhakti. They actually believe in their country so much, they're not going to allow us to break off another part. So we need to kind of figure out what is our plan, because if we're trying to get Khalistan, which is a basically effectively now, people's idea is Punjab, out of India, well then we're going to have to come up with a plan and work for that plan. right? I want to point out though, that Khalistan will be a landlocked country and its economy is worth 80 billion US dollars a year. That's the GDP of Punjab. So if we want to take over a country which is worth 80 billion GDP, take it off India, then we're going to have to have a lot of money, and a lot of resources and a pretty, pretty good plan. If we're not going to be able to do that, if that's not within our resources, then we need to think long term. Now, I do respect what happened in 1986, yeah? the Khalsa movement, we all said, right, Chardikala, let's go for Khalistan. But that was nearly 30 years ago. The movement now in Punjab is gone. Face those facts. For me, personally, I think we should just go for the whole of India. Now, you might say, well, saying you're speaking as a Khalistanis. Not really, I'm just saying, let's get more, yeah? And how do we get that? Expand into India. So again, if we stop the rhetoric about Khalistan, 
We stopped the rhetoric about trying to break up India and we said we want to help India. We want to make India better. We want to spread into India. We want to go into Rajasthan and get Rajasthani Sikhs. We want to go into Assam, get Assami Sikhs. We want to go into um, Bihar and get Bihari Sikhs. We want to go into Gujarat, go into Tamil Nadu. We want to make India great. We change our rhetoric and we start saying, you know what, we are going to work towards making India better. We're going to take over this country. We're going to make it actually great. And the only way that India is going to become great is if it starts to re respect its own rule of law. So our argument should be, you know what India, we don't want to break away from you. We're going to make you better. In fact, we're going to make you follow your own rules. And your own rules are the ones you're breaking by keeping Sikhs in prison. Yeah. So for me, we need to make a choice. Because as a punt, we can't keep shouting Nari of Khalistan Zindabad here, there and everywhere. And yet keep trying to appeal to the Indian government and the Indian people to respect their own laws because they will sanction the breaking of those laws to come against us if we start trying to break up Mother India. So, you know, it's kind of like a harsh thing for us to learn. It's a harsh truth. I'm nobody. I'm just sitting here in England. But I have to say, because when you see this, if we as a pant aren't talking about this, yeah, Sabat Khalsa used to, people used to talk, then how are we going to get the message out? How are we going to get to our people to start thinking critically? Because it's all about real politics. Real politics means doing what works yeah and we need to start becoming a bit more sort of savvy about what works and what doesn't work and for me i don't think this message of khalsan zindabad helps in any way to get those people who are in prison out to get the indian government to start respecting the rule of law because let's face it they know as long as they can post they can paint us as separatists as terrorists then they can do whatever they like because the indian people will be behind them so to summarize my binti if i could do a binti to the indian sikhs and to the Sikhs here is really let's have a clear message if our message is that India should respect this rule of law that India should prosecute all those abuses of human rights then we need to start working within India yeah doesn't mean that I respect the Indian government in place right now but the concept of India the greater concept of India as a nation which has a constitution and actually that constitution with a few changes about article 25 which I totally disagree with that constitution could make India great and the Khalsa could make India great. The Khalsa could actually make India great. And the only way it's going to do that is if the Khalsa spreads. So people like Jarnail Singh in Delhi who are doing Prachar to the low caste, that's what our focus should be. Go out there, spread Sikhi to all the people that are the Harijans. Um, you know, believe you me, those people, they do actually want Sikhi. They're fed up of casteist attitudes. They're fed up of feudal attitudes. And India is still like that. If you go to India now, you will see like low caste people, high caste people, a world of difference. Yeah, I'm not talking about those few that happen to be scheduled caste and make it great and make loads of money. I'm talking about the majority. It is still horrible. Read uh, Rohinton Mystery's book, A Fine Balance. Yeah, you will see India still needs the Khalsa revolution. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj saying, Char varan ik varan Tabe Gobind Singh naam That's what we need. We need all four castes to become like one and India to become a nation. And the Khalsa has that philosophy. Khalsa has that philosophy of respecting the sisters. India is going through a crisis about women. Punjab is going through a crisis about women. So my bainti is, let's do prachar of Sikhi. Let's do prachar of Khalsa. And the only way we can do that is if we as a Pant actually put our resource into it. You know, I'd love to have people getting together out here in the West, not doing protests, not doing all these marches, but putting money into a big Prachar fund, yeah? And just flooding Punjab with Prachar. We can take people from here, send them there. We can actually get people there who are into Sikhi to do Prachar. People that are educated. Why do they not do it? Why don't they do it? Because at the end of the day, just like us, yeah? They need to fill their paid puja, yeah? They need to fill their families daily with food. And Prachar doesn't pay. So what happens is the people that are not successful end up becoming Pracharics. There are some amazing people who obviously have inspired me, like Pai Kulwa, uh, Gani Kulwan Singh Ji, Gani Pindrapal Ji. But the majority of our prachar and our panth is pretty bad. And if we don't educate, if the panth, the Sikh panth, the panth that's supposed to learn the Shabad, Sikh Ho Shabad Piyaryo, if that panth doesn't do prachar, and doesn't teach Sikhi to its youth, we're going to have real problems. And we've seen the results, yeah? There's people like, for example, I've seen so many results of people that have actually, you know, built a school, invested somewhere and changed the life of that whole pind of that whole village. We need to start doing that. And there's no point talking about Khalistan. It's an 80 billion dollar economy, GDP. 80 billion is a lot of money. We need to have a fund of at least 1 billion to do prachar in Punjab. And that 1 billion is not that much. 
It's a thousand million, right? So a thousand Gurdwari across the globe, all they have to do is raise one million pounds each for one year. Most Gurdwari's budget is more than that. If we had a billion pounds to do Prachar, don't you think Sikhi would spread all over India? Of course it would. Sikhi is amazing. Why don't we have faith now with Shabad? If we taught people the Shabad, it would be amazing. Let's start with something small. Let's start with five million. Yeah? Is there not five million we can raise to do Prachar in Punjab? Of course we could. It just takes the will of these leaders to stop worrying about their positions, stop worrying about um, who's running what, just get the work done. And the Binti is really, let's do it. Let's not wait around. This is the year. It's 2013 still. 2013. Let's make that from now we start moving forward to do things. And I'm all in favour of people actually making a point. But if we're going to do something, let's get a media spokesman in charge. Let's get a person at front there in London, in Delhi, in Punjab, making the statements and letting people know what our Sikhs are talking about. At the moment, there's no clear-cut media direction. Yeah? And this is the reason why right now, five Sikhs are outside freezing cold, starving, and yet it's not in the press at all. Mara kare, we start to become more savvy, more politically savvy, and start to do things that actually work. Because khushi hai Mara is about karni. Karni means to do. Sunana, marna, te karna. Sikhi is about doing, but it's about doing things that work. Not wasting our time on things that don't work, but doing things that actually work. And the Pant is here to succeed, the Pant is here to do Raj. And the only way people do Raj is they start learning Rajniti. Rajniti means politics. And that's why Guru Gobind says in their hukams, Ki Sikho, learn Rajniti. This is part of Rajniti. What works and what doesn't work. So. I'm sure I've made loads of mistakes. I'm sure I offended some people. My sincere apologies for that. I'm not here to offend people. I care about this month. I want us to succeed. I want us to do what works and actually get out there. Maraj Kirpa Karinge, we will actually do it. We need to work together for that. Bintia Hegiya Minu Mahkardina, Wahiguruji Kakhalsa, Wahiguruji Kakhalsa.